Good morning. talker and a walker so I'm gonna come on out here uh, but there we do have a few things for you all to actually see up here um, and we didn't want to call out any other church we going we gonna do our own we gonna start That's with true. our own church okay because uh, it's so easy to point out things wrong with other people but we never want to be transparent and be what's wrong with us in-house so that I think that's a good place to start so one of the things so we're talking about virtual worship today I know Pastor Blair, and what was your name again? Colton. And Colton is going to be talking about another version of uh, virtual worship. So you may tend to hear a couple things that kind of coincide, but we're all here for one purpose. So we're talking about um, virtual worship. So let me ask a question. I like interactive classes, okay? So let me ask a question. What is your idea of virtual worship? Okay. So, um, participating in a worship experience outside of where the actual worship experience is happening physically. Okay, okay. Anybody else? Live, I, I hear the word live, live streaming. Okay, okay, okay. All right, very good. So here's the thing with virtual worship. So we got this picture right here, okay? On this picture, you can see blurred out the word Jesus. But the thing that you see more vividly are hands lifted, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to worship, worship requires particip participation, okay? You can go to the next slide. Um, actually, go back to that slide one more. Go back one more. Go back to the previous slide. In here, so let me point out a couple things. This is just like a blurred picture. You just see some hands lifted. It's probably the thing that you focus on primarily, right? But in the background, you see colors, okay? You see this person right here is actually on stage playing a guitar, okay? Um, colors, vivid, bold. 
We're supposed to be bold in Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. We also need to be bold when it comes to virtual worship presentation, okay? Okay, you can go to the next slide. All right, so what is virtual worship, what it is and what it is not? So Colton, you gave a really great answer. Pastor Dent, you gave a really great answer. What we kind of stated was, it's an experience that is facilitated through the use of technology, video stream, audio stream, and written messages that allows the meeting of a church body to gather together for one common purpose, which is worship. to worship. worship, all right? Virtual church is not fully digital. It simply means that it is in conjunction with a physical presence. There's also a digital component that has also been established. Some people think virtual church is you just all, it's just online church, or they say a uh, digital church. It's just a, it's just a spinoff, so to speak, in, in addition to what the current church is already doing. Mm -hmm. Now, my opinion, Lee gonna give his opinion, but virtual church just should be an extension mm -hmm. of the physical body. It shouldn't be to re in a replacement. Amen. of church. Amen. Virtual church for me is, I, I'm by nature a worshiper. Virtual church for me is um, not a replacement, but it requires full participation um, for say the homebound, people who can't get to the physical location. Mm -hmm. Then that may be their primary place of worship. Places that have um, not a lot of churches. My sister lives in a t small town in Georgia called Arlington. Arlington is very rural. They have churches, but for the churches that I have visited, which were many, and I'm gonna say the, the African-American churches, it was a lot of hoop and holler, but it wasn't enough word. So when I would go visit her, it would be so hard for me to go to church. And we would go down there for two weeks of vacation during the holiday season it would pain me to say like, I'm not going to church. And I didn't want to go to church just out of ritual because I know on Sundays I'm supposed to go to church. So I would just watch church online. But watching church online, if it's not something that's inviting, it's quick to keep on scrolling. Mm -hmm. So, can you, oh, go ahead. Can you describe quickly uh, what's inviting? What should be invited to the people that's watching uh, from the live stream or at home or whatever? We're going to go, we'll, we'll, we'll give us a minute. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get into that. Um, so making sure that it's inviting. Um, virtual church is not a spectatorship, but it requires, in fact, full <coughs> participation. So Pastor and I, uh, about two years ago, went to uh, Savannah. Savannah, Georgia, New Brunswick, Georgia. We went out there on our vacation and, uh, or on our um, anniversary. So while we were out there, a couple of friends of ours were gonna watch church with us, okay? And um, the year before that, let me go back, the year before that, we were watching our church while we were getting ready to go to their church. So we didn't use it as a replacement. We still went to the physical church because they had a church home, but we were actually watching online the following year, they had moved from the DMV, which is where we were previously, down to New Brunswick or Brunswick, Georgia. While we were down there, they hadn't found a church home. But we, we, weren't, we, we missed Sundays, but we weren't going to not go to church because, you know, we were away from home. So what we did was they pulled, the church up on, they pulled church up online on Facebook Live, and they hooked it up to the TV. Sometimes... When you're in virtual worship, you have to know how to be present. And I think most people don't know how to be present in the moment. They will turn church online, they over here cooking, kids getting on the nerves, you trying to get them together. Uh, your husband asking where his shirt at, it need to be ironed, you doing this. You hear it in the background and people think, that the same, those same people that do that also have this, are those same people who have the same mindset of, oh, I'm, it's Sunday, I'm gonna go ahead and go to church. But they're in there on their phone, they're scrolling, they're laughing, they're talking, they're planning what they're going to have for dinner. They're not present. In worship, whether it is online or in person, you have to be present. 
it is unfair to think that God is going to be present in our lives all the time in any situation, wherever we are, but we cannot show up for him. It's not just about showing up on Sunday morning. It's about if you are watching online, you have got to be present. Your mind, body, and soul has to be there in that moment. It's no different than if you are wooing, you know, Pastor Blair, when you were wooing Lady B, you know, you weren't in her presence talking to her, but you really thinking about something else. She wanted your, she required your full attention. Jesus requires our full, our full attention at all times. You have to be present um, in the moment. So we got a couple of myths as it relates to virtual worship. So myth number one is that virtual worship is not considered to be real worship. The term virtual, or people may say digital, can be slightly confusing for some people because when we use the word virtual, it's like you're saying almost like. So I can say, oh, I can say, you know what, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor B, that's, that's virtually like my brother, almost like my brother. We're not blood related, but it's almost like my brother. So it is real, but it may be not be real. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, some people say, okay, well, I've grown up with this person. I've known this person for 20 years, and that was my brother. I mean, that's virtually my brother. Well, we ain't blood related. We just known each other for a long time. That's good. So virtually would be almost like. Then it also can mean computer or software generated. When we think about virtual worship, we're going to take it from the standpoint of it's computer or software generated, okay? Just an experience, a physical experience that is being broadcast to my home where I can still get the experience, the presence of Jesus Christ in my home, okay? You can go to the next myth. All right, myth number two is virtual, virtual worship is disembodied. Disembodied for those who don't know, just simply means separated or existing without the body or presence of others. All right, so I would be remiss if I did not give you scripture. So Matthew 18 and 20 says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be in the midst. So if it's you, so, so let me say this. So when we are starting our virtual uh, worship, Usually in the bottom, we have somebody who corresponds in the chat, and we'll talk about that in a minute, that says, hey, grab your family, your Bibles, your note-taking items. Don't forget to be a digital evangelist, like, share, comment, those type of things. So just think about if you're at home by yourself, people think that you have to have people around you. Now, I know the word says, forsake not the assembly, and I'm fully persuaded that you should be in church. But if you find yourself in a moment where you cannot get to the physical building, do not consider it not to be full worship. You're not disembodied. If the Bible says where two or three are gathered together, that's you, your family members on live stream, and Jesus, don't that make three? Two or three. Okay. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and we're going to read 12 through 14, and y'all, this King James Version, because I don't know if Bishop's going to see this, and Bishop say King James Version is the real Bible, so we're going with the real Bible today, okay? For, so it says, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all of the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be, a, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. So, if it's you, your family members in the house, or your family members online, and, and Jesus, that's two, Plus one is three, okay? And if we want to get real, real, if, he, we, if, if you consider him to be the Trinity, Come on. that's six. Come on. 
Okay, so you you literally are never. It's not worship is not an end. It's an individual thing, but it's when it comes to virtual worship because you may feel like I'm just there by myself, but it's not individualistic. Okay, you can tap it in, tap in at any time. Last week before Bishop came, we celebrated our four year church anniversary. Myself and uh, Sister Malika, which is our chief operating officer, I told her, I said, listen, I have to fast because I, f I got this anxiousness in my spirit, but it wasn't a bad thing. It was something like I felt like something great was going to happen, but I wanted to hone in and figure out exactly what it was. So I started fasting. I didn't tell pastor that I was fasting. I didn't eat. I, literally all I had was water. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. So we were sitting at the table and we were just kind of talking and I think he might have been eating a few things or whatever. And I was sitting there just drinking some water and we were watching, um, we were watching Bible study. We were watching Perfecting Church's Bible study. And so as it, we were sitting at the table, just fully engaged in it and then it had gone off. And so we got up and started doing, you know, a couple of cleaning up the kitchen. And then the next thing I know, convocation came back on. And I'm sitting there and he's talking. He was like, man, do you remember when blah, 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 you know? And it got to the point when you were up on stage and Holy Spirit just wrecked it. You kept trying to move on, but you could not move on. And I sat there and I had my hand and I'll just get this moment. I'm like, okay, okay, you know, this is okay. This, you, okay, you're not there. You at home, okay, you, whatever. And so he kept trying to talk to me and talk to me and, and I got to rocking and next thing I know, he started talking and all of a sudden he stopped in mid-sentence. So it took me a minute, I got myself together. She's completely engaged. And he said, babe, I'm so sorry. And I said, for what? He said, I didn't even realize. He said, I'm talking to you, I thought you were just, you know, in the moment, you know. I said, well, I was in the moment, but it took me back to convocation. To convocation. And he said, I looked over and her face was like soaking wet. Because I, it was just, it was not an individual thing. It was a thing that I remember. So even if you have someone who, many times you'll run across people that say, well, man, I ain't been to church in a long time. There's something that was in church that they remember. Your virtual experience for them that shares, that's why it's so important to be digital evangelists. Don't tell your people just, oh, let's like, share, and comment, because that almost sounds like a Facebook post. Mm -hmm. Empower them and tell them to be a digital evangelist. That's, That's what community. we're called to do is disciple Christ, right? Am I right? We're, we're called to disciple people to Christ? Mm -hmm. Empower them to say, okay, what? You know what? Be a digital evangelist. You're a disciple for Christ. You may not wear a collar. You may not be behind a podium. You may not ever step foot in a pulpit but you are still called to be a digital, you're still called to be an evangelist. Now, because we are in a digital world, we just have to call them digital evangelists. The whole role is still bringing people to Christ. Let's not take it as we're sitting there watching TV. There's a, there's a purpose and there's a power that we're trying to get people to. When it comes to worship, our Levites are supposed to bring people into the presence of God. That's the same thing we have to do when it comes to virtual worship. I don't think I put the third myth on here, but the third myth was that it's individualistic. We just talked about that. It's not individualistic. It's how you engage into that worship setting or that worship atmosphere. Be present, literally, in the moment. Um, what does it mean to be present in the moment? We just talked about that. Literally, you, to, exactly, to be, to be what now? Be engaged without any distractions. That's it. So when you know service is getting ready to come on, I've even been thinking about this. I haven't even talked to Deacon Lee about it, but I've even been thinking about like, hey, let's put a video out right before the service starts. You know, hey, 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 listen, let me tell y'all something. We are about to go live in, 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 in 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to give you time to go get your family or, the, or 15 minutes. We're going to give you time to go ahead and get all your family in, get all your friends, call them up, get your kids settled, get your husband settled, get your family settled. Because guess what? God needs you fully engaged in this moment and you don't need anything. Because let me tell you something. Y'all would be so mad 
if y'all were in a dire need of God to come through, say, let's just say, Colton, give me a time that you really needed God. Um, and he really showed up. At the top of the year. Okay, give me, give me a small glimpse. Um, now let's say, let's say, let's say a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. um, life, life or death, death health issues. Okay, boom. So God showed up? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Let's say you were right in the middle of that. You had gotten a diagnosis from the Lord, I mean, from the doctor, and you, you your, your faith is strong. You said, oh, Lord, I'm gonna believe in you because I know you to be a healer. And right, you, things started progressing. You started seeing things change. And right when you needed him the most, he said, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Such and such need me over here. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You know what? Somebody, somebody else need me over here. And you standing there waiting like, okay, well, God, I mean, like, things were going good. It was progressing. Like, what happened? Yeah. But he didn't do you like that. He was present in the moment. He yeah. saw you all the way through that. Yeah. Although he is omniscient and omnipresent, he can be everywhere at the same time. Mm -hmm. But for the purposes of this example, what if God said, Right when you like right on the edge, you go, you get ready to go to your last appointment. Everything else looked good up until that point. You go into your last appointment yeah. and you know at this point, shh, it should be clear. Yeah. But the doctor said, ah, <laughs> I don't know what happened, uh, but you back almost to square one. Yeah. What, what would your faith have said at that point? What would your mindset have been? Yeah, like, uh, can't believe you left me out here. Y'all don't, don't think God feel like that? Yeah. Mm, come on. Mm. Come on. When you in a virtual worship, you in here and, oh, God, Heavenly Father, you're so good. And you're speaking in tongues and kids hollering and blah, blah, blah. But instead of ignoring them, Mom, he hit me. And instead of you ignoring them, you say, oh, okay. Listen, if y'all don't sit down and be quiet, mm -hmm. Because most of the time, if you stop, you don't go right back into that place. So you just, you just totally put him on pause. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. And he's out there like, well, come back. Yeah, that's good. Well, what happened? Yeah. Why did you leave me? And the one thing we never want to do is leave the presence of God. Okay. When you are in the presence of God, you should never leave his presence and not be changed. It should give you a different mindset. You can ignore. And let me tell you, I have seen Deacon Lee. Kids could be over here running around crazy, whatever the case is. But if he is in that moment of worship, and I don't know if y'all have ever seen a musician get up off the key and dance while they still holding that one key. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> he ain't going to worry about them. Somebody else will get them. Long as they don't die, blood ain't shed, they all right. He gonna still stay in that moment of worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to stay in that moment of, um, of virtual worship. What's the next slide? Huh? Okay, before we go to that. So we talked about, you asked the question on how we, um, how do we engage people into worship, right? All right, so. Engaging people in worship, just like, so I taught, a, I taught a message a couple, a while ago called The Walking Dead. And it was really about walking around spiritually dead. You got people walking around, but spiritually they're dead. They're just operating, just going along to get along. And I told them that sin appeals to all five senses. Worship appeals to all five senses. Absolutely. Hearing, yeah. seeing, mm -hmm. what are the other ones? Touch. Uh huh. Taste. Uh huh. Taste. Okay. You got to hear worship. Yeah. You can't have worship going on and something else going, something else, uh, something else playing in there because it's going to be a distraction. 
you got to hear worship. You got to see worship. You got to feel worship. You got to taste worship. And you got to smell it. It needs to be the thing, that very thing that consumes your body. It appeals to all five senses of the body. So when it comes to virtual worship, so in-house, everybody doesn't have the lights. Okay? Lights are good. Everybody doesn't have that. Uh, cameras, 4K uh, cameras, everybody doesn't have those. But how can we invite people into worship? How can we make it look good? Because this is the thing. Everybody else makes it look good. The world makes everything else look good and it makes it so appealing that I would rather go over here than to go over here. People say, well, if y'all put on the lights, what, what, what they say, Lee? If you put on lights, it's a what, concert? Yeah. If it's too much dancing, it's a circus. But you can scroll on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and whatever else, and see somebody over here dancing to whatever the case may be, lights flashing, having a good time. But why can't we present Christ like that? They call our church They call our church Club Mahima. Club who? Club Mahima. Hey. That's what they call our church. They call it special. That's what they say about our church. You know, it, it is, but we, it, Jesus, the message doesn't change. One thing that Pastor Donnie said last year in convocation I went to, not, well, not this past year, but the year before, I went into his worship class. One thing he was talking about was when it comes to music, somebody had asked, how do you feel about uh, a lot of artists using um, a lot of Christian artists, gospel artists, using secular music. He said, I don't have a problem with that. It's the message that defiles it, mm -hmm. not the music. Mm -hmm. So just because you have lights, cameras, action, it doesn't defile Jesus. Yes. It should just only be used to enhance him. Good. You just got to make it look good. Everybody, don't, everybody is not the king. I, I believe King James, is, that's what I grew up on. But to get other people to understand what the thee, thou, thus, and those meant, mm -hmm. sometimes I have to use the ghetto version, which is the message version of the Bible. Or sometimes I have to use the New Living Translation to get people to understand mm -hmm. so I can grasp everybody in there. I'm still going back to the King James Version, but I may use it to grasp everybody in. That's how we want to look at it from a visual presentation as it comes to virtual worship. Make sure your background is clean. I don't care if you having to do a Bible study or whatever from your home. I will get on pastor. I'm like, listen, nothing don't need to be behind you. I don't care if you're sitting on the couch. Don't nothing need to be on the couch with you. I get on, I get on him on Tuesday morning prayer. If I hear that coffee cup hit that table one more time, I'm flying down that stairs. I'm like, hey, leave that cup alone. Because sometimes that could be a, you don't think about it, but it could be a distraction yeah. where it takes them from hearing the word of God to, I keep hearing this coffee mug hit. I'm not opposed to them drinking coffee on there, but let's put a paper towel or towel or something so they don't have to hear that they can focus on what I'm saying. So background makes a difference. Sound makes a difference. Now, Pastor Blair, when you came, we, we were already in our building. But when you came, we started out with I mm -hmm. And we had an I rig. Because guess what? We were just started. We were a church plant. But we were going to make it be what we could make it be. We were going to use what we had to present Jesus. So we used iPads. In the beginning, we had raw sound in the room. It was no eye rig or anything. Matter of fact, I think we probably had a cell phone, as a matter of fact, before we even got to the point where you came. It was a raw sound in the building. But we made sure that was the best raw sound. Everybody else, we like, shh, shh, hey, 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 hey. We just want them to hear. Worshiping the word in here. Okay? So, talk about, so we're going to talk about our, we're going to go back to our videos from when we first kind of started to where we are now. We're talking about visual presentation on virtual worship. All right. She's a preacher, I think, from the uh, 
pretty much the technical aspect is why I, you know, kind of add a lot of stuff. And um, we'll make mention, it's kind of like the time history of virtual worship for me, because virtual worship isn't something new. It's just something that the church evolved into, especially the black church. Uh, in a lot of areas, especially when it comes to technology and entertainment, uh, we fall pretty behind the ball in those areas. Uh, I can recall over 10 years ago, virtual worship for us was recording DVDs of service and burning them and selling them after That's church. Right. That's, right. That's, right. That's what virtual worship was 10 That's plus right. years ago. Uh, and then they started advancing in technology and then we had Periscope before we had Facebook and all that stuff. Uh, and then even before Facebook, churches would go live on the website, you know? So then the Facebook and the YouTube era started and then COVID-19 is what made it a must to have virtual church. And in a lot of areas, churches died or fell off because they didn't have technology, they didn't have proper sound, they didn't have cameras, they didn't believe in lights past the fluorescent lights. So in a lot of areas, churches were not prepared for COVID-19. And by the time that they saw that this is the only way that we can reach people in a lot of areas, okay, we need to go back cameras now, we need to do this. It's been going on for a year already. You can't find anything. And for a lot of people, um, we miss the mark of not wanting to use certain words in church, like entertainment or uh, what's the other? production. Um, you know, it has to be attractive. Uh, one thing I'll say, you know, most churches went YouTube or Facebook primarily. Church turned into a TV station. And we hate to use the word entertainment in church, but that's what we had to adapt to. Because if you're sitting on your couch watching service, I see this church, and there's a video where the church live stream was going on, and they had the mother of the church controlling the live stream. And she didn't know how to flip the camera, so the whole service, she ended up doing like this, <laughs> trying to figure out how to do it. Nobody's going to watch a church. When you have a bigger church that's having, I mean, mass production, like new birth, having praise and worship with six flags, they got the youth running around doing different things. It came to the point to where, why do I have to watch your church? I'm still a member, you know, I still love my pastor, but I have no reason to get up at 9 a.m. and watch your service when at 10 o'clock, I mean, they're jumping, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, your church is like the commercial, this church is the movie that, that, that doesn't stop. And um, I'll say for instance, First Lady mentioned church, like, uh, this is one example, let me see if the audio works. We're on there, people can come and watch, but you can tell somebody just standing there doing like this, right? Uh, this was one of our other services where we, uh, I think we were still using iPads at uh -huh. that time, we had switcher. So we tried to incorporate lights and stuff, but we're, we're looking at quality. And I always like to mention the Christian contemporary church, the white church. They've always been up here when it comes to what they present with lighting, with video, sound quality, even how they present praise and worship in a certain way. And a lot of people say it feels like a concert, but they do it at a professional level. And I think we mix those two words of, it feels like this, it's a professional thing. When it comes to, just like you say, being a pastor, you have to study your work, you have to know what you're doing, you can't just get up there. Same thing with leading praise and worship, playing an instrument, all those things, it's a profession, it's a certain way that we have to do it. Um, Earl is God. So this audio is a little bit more oh, direct. Oh, I was saying, uh, uh, even looking at video quality, it works, right? This direct. And then we upgrade some more. We got doctors and attorneys better cameras, for Canada, better lighting this morning, in this room. And then go a little bit further. Stand as if the Everything, church get better you. graphics, get better things. <sighs> different angles. It brings your attention. And one thing I would tell our media team at the church is you have to have the eyes of the viewer, right? Behind the camera, if the pastor walks over there, you're not going to still be looking like this. Your eyes are going to shift. You know, if somebody's running across the room, they're not going to be behind you. You're going to see them run across the room. It makes them feel like they're actually in the sanctuary, you know? So there's a lot of elements like that um, that's just important. 
And I also feel, like she stated, we started off with iPads and stuff like that. A lot of churches thought we have to have, you know, a couple of thousand dollars to get things going. What we started off using was an app called Switcher. I think it's like 30, 40 bucks a month you pay for it. And you can literally just have all your devices on the same internet connection. Your iPhone is a camera. Your iPad's a camera. You have 10 of those around the room. I think a lot of people are just scared that, you know, we have to have a budget for this thing. It's COVID-19, you know, it's, it's a lot going on. We don't have steady people in the church. We don't know what the uh, uh, online attendance is going to be. And they might have ran away from a few things. And me and First Lady also talked about uh, going back to what virtual worship is. When I communicated with her, I said virtual worship is also a spiritual mindset. Uh, for the fact that we speak of what it looked like for you sitting behind your TV or watching it on your phone, they missed the flip side of that. What was it like for a praise team and a pastor sitting in the church singing to a camera every week? Yes, sir. It had to be a spiritual mindset. But there were plenty of times where three or four weeks goes by. I mean, we're churching heavy, and it's just five people in the room. The camera, the pastor, the band, the praise and worship leader. I mean, falling out, shouting, pastor can't preach, and ain't nobody in the room at all. Jesus. We just preaching to a camera. So that had to be a spiritual mindset of why we do this. And then also, you might not be able to preach to anybody in the room, but a virtual worship allows you to preach to millions. Yes. That's right. Way bigger than you can do in a room, you know? Oh, it allows you to reach so much further and wider. What else do we have? That's it. I don't know. What what platform are you using there? So um, we do Facebook and YouTube. We just started doing Facebook and YouTube, but uh, we were doing Facebook at first. And there's software. It's like uh, online called like Restream. We use one called Caster. Mm -hmm. Websites that just allow you to put your Facebook and your YouTube, and they stream to it both at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also allows you to um, add videos on there your own logos, you, anything that you need to download, lower thirds, any type of visual presentation that, that you need to add. So, you know, if when we start our live stream, it's normally like a uh, intro video going on. After the intro video, we have a little praying video, like a little, a little motion graphic that says praying when we start prayer. After that, we'll either go directly into the house. If we feel like, hey, Something that's all we need to think of people on the live stream will go to a flyer. But it never, we try not to ever come home and there's nothing on stage. Like they're literally coming into the worship service. That's good. Uh, uh, this Just to give an example of what she was speaking of. So we start our live stream five minutes before service, and it comes up with service will begin shortly just to give people time to chime in, be running late, you know, mm -hmm. typical things. Um, we have our countdown. And then, uh, so we just Yes. Um, so we had one video that was running for a long time that uh, was okay. Uh, we put a Vincent Bohannon song on there and uh, they didn't remove that. It's kind of like a hit and miss for us. Because then I switched it. They were like, okay, we're tired of hearing that song. We've been hearing it for six months. Can't change it. I changed it to a Ricky Dillard song. Every Sunday, Facebook blocked our, our live. YouTube was okay with it. But Facebook was like, no. And until I would go on there in service and delete the video, it wouldn't show up a broadcast on Facebook. You uh, have to get the license. Yes. There's a, a CCLI license you have to get. Absolutely. And there's a streaming license yes. you have to have. Yes. And even having those licenses, there are artists who, because they get paid for every play, that's right. They will still shut you down. That's right. Yeah. Okay. But until you get that, I think I said share with Pastor. Then there is a statement that needs to be made at the beginning, uh, even if you don't even have the license. 
because you will get cut off. We would we would do uh, some songs that we was good with it because we had the license, both license, but we played a town of man song mm -hmm. and they shut it off. Well, they didn't shut it off. They muted her section yeah. mm -hmm. because we didn't have direct permission from Timmy Man to play her music or we didn't pay to play her music. So you have to, that is a must if you don't have it. Get the two licenses, CCLI -C and your streaming license. Yes. You have to have it and then be mindful. There are still some songs that's why you, when you had Vincent Bohannon, he ain't as large as a Ricky Dillon. Right. Oh, they don't have, not that they're not large, they don't have the, don't have the platform, platform the as far as yeah. their label. Yes. yes. One, one label might say, hey, the publishing <clears throat> and all that, this is what we require. Mm -hmm. And then one label says, hey, we're not that strict on that. It don't matter. So there'll be some artists that will shut you down, that they have to, at that moment, uh, I remember we did something, David was in the service, he got a text that we were playing the song and he had to approve it at that moment mm -hmm. before them to even turn it back on. By the end, it was too late, we was out of that. So they muted half that section. Uh, it goes down for half that section. And if it's a continuous process, they just shut your live. And then you also have to be mindful of the fact that this is, from a technological perspective, this is a business. Yeah. It is a business and there are protocols that have to be followed within that business. So you need to make sure that as you're streaming that you do your homework, find out about the licenses, find out you don't just get up and just play a song just because you like that song. Right. You need to find out where the licenses come from also, there's so much stuff out now, um, on the one hand it's proprietary, but then on the other hand, there is um, music that you don't have to have, non-copyright, non-copyright stuff. I would also suggest anybody that is um, really active in trying to develop these dreams, subscribe to a couple of websites, a couple of, of websites that will give you the full package. They can recommend, you can use this music to stream with. You can use this music as instrumental bands to open up your um, your services with. They will also give you uh, many movies um, for sermon books, um, stills, countdowns, all those, are, it is there. Um, what's happening now in pre particularly the black church, we've been flying under the radar for so long, mm -hmm. nobody's really been paying attention mm -hmm. to the things that we've been getting away with for so long. But now that everybody's streaming, everybody's on Facebook, everybody's on YouTube, now the powers that be are saying, this is something we need to pay attention to because we're losing money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. when it went yeah. virtual. Right, when it went virtual. When it went virtual, yes. then the Licensing, understand. Yes. Just like radio, stream is doing the same thing. Yes. So, you know, they want to capitalize on that they as well. Want, yes. Because again, it promotes the artists. It, it allows us to get paid in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, so, they tapped in to make that happen. Yes. It was already happening with our Caucasian sisters mm -hmm. and brothers yes. on the CCM church. Yep. They was already doing it. Michael W. Smith then was already getting this stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now that we're doing it and we're involved now, the the gospel artists labels are saying, hey, we gotta get them taken care of for that. Yeah. And then something else you have to and I'm this is, no, 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 no. something else you have to be mindful of. This is something that I really pay attention to a lot with um with Bishop Ronald. I watch their live stream every week. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I really do pay attention to, when they perform, when they minister, the music, the music that he uses, either he's gonna use his own music yeah. that he owns, 
or he uses the music and he makes arrangements. He does arrangements of it. He he doesn't perform it just exactly like the rest. Like, yep. Because that way, you have to read the fine print of the licenses. You have the right to perform a song within certain parameters. Mm -hmm. But if you do your arrangement of it. Yeah, but technically, you can perform a song live. You can't play a song. Right. Right. We can sing a song all day in church. Right. You can get up and sing whatever song you want to sing. But when it's come to playing that CD right. mm -hmm. or that actual song, there's a payment. But, and then now there's a license that you have to have. Yeah. There's a, a, another license that you have to have for live performances. So, for a streaming license. So you have to make yeah. sure that you have all of these licenses. Um, as you develop your, your media ministry, you have to have a budget allocated to pay certain fees annually. Mm -hmm. That just needs to be a part of the budget. You know that you're going to have to pay X amount of dollars for your CCL license, depending on the size of your church. Your streaming license, depending on the size of your church. Mm -hmm. If you are, if you show lyrics, mm -hmm. um, all of that falls under that CCL license. All of those things, you have to make sure that you're budgeted for it and that you keep the license current. Because if you don't, they will deem you. And I know one of the things that we have to deal with now is making sure that they see the license. You gotta show your numbers because if you don't, they'll cut you off. So do you put that license in the in the you, you put that in your notes. Put that in your notes. Yeah. You can put that in your notes or I've even seen some churches have a problem at like the first two or three minutes. They have a problem that says um, we do not own the rights to this and our CCL our copyright license mm -hmm. is da 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 um, so the behind the scenes stuff that you do, the behind the scenes stuff that we have people that, that work this is extremely important. Just remember, you can sing anything you want. Don't, don't, I don't want to confuse that. We sing everything. Yeah. You can sing whatever you want in church. You don't need a license for that. You need to stream the license all together. Right. To stream, but you can sing whatever you want. But at the moment, so if I sing the potter at church, Lady B and I, and it went viral. We didn't get shut down for that. Mm -hmm. But at the moment I felt led to play the part. Okay. You get shut yeah. down. Yeah. They said, oh, no, 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 no. Because that's like radio. Right. You played the song. Right. And we need to, 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 <laughs> we need right. to finance it off, right. off that. Mm -hmm. So. So what, and then what we did was, you know, during regular Sunday service, this song right here playing is a young lady that I used to go to church with a while, a while ago, and she's coming out. She's trying to come up with her album. So she said, hey, listen, y'all can use my music, whatever the case is, a couple songs on there, so we'll switch them out on there. Uh, Tuesday morning, when pastor's doing prayer from home, <coughs> he'll just go, I will go through one of those really great serve, praise and worship services that we had previously. Play. That's what, that's what we're going to play. Play that. Because it's music that we've already done, That's we've right. already done altered how they do the song. Our musicians are phenomenal for putting a spin on everything, so it never sounds like what it was intended, what the, what the original artist. And you know, so that's another way to do your music. So my question then is, we're using uh, we're, we're wishing our pages, you know, Facebook, we talked about mm -hmm, mm -hmm. through Castro. So mm -hmm. any of these licenses coming to the back or that's just, uh, I'm like lost. <laughs> Those streaming platforms have nothing to do with right. the license. They just platforms that you're using yeah, to you're using broadcast your okay. mm -hmm. They so just made your job easy. That's, that's considered streaming or that's not streaming? You're talking about something totally different. No, that's still considered streaming. Mm -hmm. they're, just, they're just platforms. Instead of you saying, I got to get this one on to go to plat uh, Facebook, I gotta use a lady right. Douglas phone to go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. I gotta use Lee phone to go to TikTok. You got one platform that's gonna shoot it out to everybody at one time. Right. And so there's no licensure necessary for that. That's what you're saying. No, it is licensed. You still need license for stream. Yes. So, so, so the money we're paying them, that's not for that having you know, all the all this is paying for the platform. platform. Yeah, you, right. you just paying for this to do it for yourself. 
So it's, it's okay. So when you so so do me a favor, when you get up and you guys start get to talking, we're gonna be off that. We 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 all we ain't even talking about that virtual. Just I don't have to talk. I'm I'm just saying at the end, talk about how to how to read the license. I think that's something that's important that yeah. people yeah. want yeah. to know. Yeah, cost yeah. when we need it, what we need it for. Uh, yeah, that's 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 important. Just two main licenses you need is your CCLI and your streaming. That's, that's the two things that you need, for sure. And I just connect you with our God uh, to get that. All right. And a lot of churches don't know that, but it's simple. But here's the other thing, and I said this so too. So what's the, what's the issue if you don't have that? That's when they need your stuff and doing all that? Is well, again, you can't, you can't say if I open up, like this is one of them. But if they was playing Kirk's song with that, they gonna shut all that down. Mm -hmm. They're not singing that. They playing Kirk song. That's a shutdown. You can't you can't play recorded music unless they're in it. Most of your time you can get away with that. Like unless you're talking about independent artists, mm -hmm. you can play Blair, but you can't play the Wines. Right. You can play uh, Colton record, but you can't play Commission. Because, you know, independent versus those that are on labels right. have things different. Most independent artists are not that far into to that activity unless they got somebody working for them. So it just, but I want to read a statement to you guys, if I can find it only I read it to, uh, to Pastor, I don't even know if I can. And Pastor, if I could, while you're trying to find that statement, I can tell you guys what the two licenses are. The first one, if you go to ChristianCopyrightSolutions.com, CCS, ChristianCopyrightSolutions.com, one word, ChristianCopyrightSolutions.com. That will give you your streaming license. It's called a worship cast streaming license. And then the other license that you need is your CCLI license. That's your, um, and if you go to CCLI.com, yeah. that gives you your, your license to, um, to um, to perform online, it gives you your license to show lyrics and all those other things. And they've really they set it up so that um, the licenses themselves will cover all of the different aspects. But those two websites will give you all of the information that you need to um, make sure that you're current and compliant. Because the other thing that we have to be concerned about is that. And this is another aspect of streaming that we should talk about. The church is a target now. Yep. The church is a target now more than ever. Particularly if you are preaching a message that is anti quote unquote culture. <laughs> if you're preaching a message, and if you're standing against homosexuality, or if you're preaching against abortion, or if you're preaching against uh, same-sex marriage, if you treat you, uh, you know, by the, being binary or LGBT alphabet people, all this kind of stuff, if you're saying something against that, you're a target. Yeah, but, but that's not streaming. That's, that's right. your platform issue. That's your platform, but what I'm saying. Facebook had a problem with that. YouTube has a problem with that. And they would and disconnect they would you. Cut right. Yeah, no, they'll cut you off all together. They'll cut you off all together. What license yeah. you have? So, what, what, uh, what, so they don't care what license you have. Yeah, they don't care what license you have. Right. Because it's right. that. My point for saying yeah. that was you just want to make sure that if they have a reason, that is the reason. Mm -hmm. that you don't want to be cut off because you didn't have the right paperwork. You don't want to be cut off because you didn't have what you needed to have to be compliant. If they cut you off, tell me they cut you off because I appreciate Because you got to stand it. Right. So, yeah. so, so, so when you say cut off, are you talking permanently? Or are you talking about that broadcast? Or they'll just cut that broadcast. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then will they, they'll let you know or something? They'll, they'll send you a note. They'll send you. 
<laughs> they gonna send you a quick old message. Yep. Yeah. It, it, I mean, again, it's all about, and I'm trying to find the right way to say it. <clears throat> it's about who you are. Right. They ain't gonna target you, they gonna target Jax. Okay. Status. Yeah, you, you don't, they don't care about 20 versus they care about 10,000. Right. Okay. So you got a Jax and Evans and all these mainstream guys. Mm -hmm. That's why they have to be mindful or uh, you see them kind of go around the corner of uh -huh. what they gonna say. Uh -huh. Bishop Winers don't care. He don't. He ain't never been. He ain't never. Okay, I got. It. He ain't never been. Yeah, yeah. He ain't never been concerned about that anyway. No, no, no. Virtual COVID made him do that. Yeah. So, pass that. Absolutely. If you get my license of information the other day, you read me. What you have? Because I was sharing with him last Sunday. The title of my sermon was "My Cup Running Over and Over and Over Again." They muted that because of my title. Now we had somebody to to uh, research it. To dispute it, and they released or they let it play. But they did it because of the title. So uh, this is good. Now, whose song was that? I don't know whose song. They just said it was a copy. It's got to be somebody. Somebody. Is it R and B song? <laughs> no, no. The reason why I say that. No, the reason why I say that because the Tommy's had a song called Over and Over. Yeah. You said that? The Tommy's had a song Over and Over. Yeah, but it had to be something. Right. That's a ballad. Yeah. Okay. That's probably what Is it an R&B ballad? No, I'm about to buy it. Like, 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 who? No, no, no. The reason why I say that because a lot of people doing that Beyonce breaking my soul. Right. And they shutting it down every round. Just words. It just is because what we do is we try to play, we build our sermons to play off that. Right. And we use their lyrics, and then that causes issues. So, you know. This is good. This is good. Yeah. But the statement if you don't have a license, here's what you need to say rights and ownership of the music performed and are replayed during this broadcast are retained by the original authors. You can stop there if you don't have the license. Put that statement out there whether you had a license or not. At least put that one. If you have the license, then our next line says, we Newbury Christian Center do not own the rights to the music, and then we got our CCLI copyright number and streaming license number for Newbury Christian Center. Put that out. Now, do you have a graphic that you, you put that as a header? That's on that's on that's on oh, our that's on, your, that's on, your, that's your on the uh, the note when you go on Facebook or gotcha. you you gonna see that it's gonna post it's gonna post there the whole time. Gotcha. So part of the post. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yes. When you yes, and you could do it in um, our platform that we use is Boxcast. Okay. So when we setting up Boxcast, it's just right there all together, and it just shoots to all of them. You mind sharing it? Box cats? No, sharing your statement. Oh, I don't mind at all. Absolutely. Let's give it up for the lady. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it to Colton, who actually teach. I'm going to sit back down. Colton, you can grab that one over there. Um, again, one thing we are is helpers to one another. And I'm, I'm a fan of Lady Aries. I think we were just talking the other week. And I was like, okay, what cameras y'all using? Because everything should always be development to be better. Always. Uh, Cindy and I, we talk all the time. When we first got into this, we was talking about, okay, what you doing? Here's what I'm doing. We have friends that we communicate with. Hey, Absolutely. turn me on to this. I got a guy now uh, because what's terrible on our stream is the lighting. The lighting is terrible. Mm -hmm. Then we looked at it and say the lighting is too far. So I'm, I'm redoing it now. We're taking all the lighting down and we're going to put them at the stage mm -hmm. to light it all up to do. And you have to understand it is a big budget. Mm -hmm. 
but do what you can and make what you have yes. the best. Yes. Sometimes it's just a matter of moving the camera up. That's right. You know, sometimes you got a camera don't, that don't get that far. You all the way back there trying to save some seats. You might have to put that thing as close as you can so you can get what you're trying to get. And, and you just got to, you know, let people come in and tell you. And then a lot of this sometimes our issue is we, we love volunteers. Oh my, come on, sir, come on, come on. We love volunteers and we let them do the work and they don't know what they doing. And then your stream is a mess because you just like volunteers. Train them. If they can't be trained, find somebody who know what they doing. And go and spend a little money to hire some people so they can come in and help you do what you need to do. Because volunteers going to get, again, Lady Eric said something that was great. And this is what I fuss at our church about. If I come on your stream and it's not that good for me, again, I'm a member, but I'm going to leave. And I'm going to, you know, if, if your stream go down because y'all was playing Kirk Franklin and you knew you didn't have no business playing that and you go down, well, I'm going to go somewhere else because at 10 o'clock, everybody's streaming. Yeah. Come on, you look at Facebook, every, everybody is streaming. So all I need to do is go to the next, the next, the next person. And if that's hot, I can't come back because I done got engaged at what's going on over there. That's right. So you lost me for that Sunday. So my offering, my tithe, my tithe's gonna come to y'all, but I'm gonna probably throw that $20 they asked for, you know. And you can't be mad, cause that's where I'm at for the moment. That's right. So it's gonna shut down. Now, we, we talking about worship development. No, the relationship between the pastor and the worship leader. So we're gonna deal with worship development. So I'm, we are we all good with virtual worship? Let's give it up for Lady Aries and Brother. Well, I heard his name Deacon Lee. Deacon Lee. One of the most, and I'm gonna pass it over to Colton. I'm gonna stand by. Okay. Uh, one of the most interesting things that we don't pay attention to in church, and we have a lot of confusion, is there is no relationship between pastor and worship leader, minister music, whatever you have in place. And that's why we experience or you experience a lot of high turnover when it comes to uh, development of worship. It is important for me, my job as the pastor is to prepare sermons preach and pray and watch over the souls that are under me. Um, I, I was a minister of music before I became a pastor, but that ain't my job at the church. My assignment is to give it to whom I trust and I have relationship with them. I don't, we talk, if not every day in a week, when it comes to music, we gonna talk at least three or four times. I know what is being taught. We talk about, when we say in development, worship development, if I'm in a series, I say to Brother Colton, I'm going to do this series. His job as the worship leader at that moment is, I'm going to put music that is tailored to the series. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I teach our church, there are three conversations that go on in church. Mm -hmm. Three conversations. First conversation is we're going to talk to him. Okay, that's through our music. We're going to talk to him. Second conversation, we're going to talk to each other. We're going to greet each other and say, hey, what's going on? Visit, whatever. Third conversation, he talks to us. Now, if the conversation, have you ever been in a conversation where you start out, you talking about going to McDonald's, and the person you're talking to in the middle of the conversation talking about going to buy some shoes, and you're looking like, where did shoes come out of me getting a Big Mac? How do, we, how do we even get there? Because we're confusing the conversation. So there has to be relationship. Uh, one thing that I 
could say about Newbury, we don't have a high turnover with musicians and worship leaders because we have a great understanding of our roles. Mm -hmm. A great mm -hmm. understanding of our roles. Brother Colton would tell I would say this, Sister Aaron, there are times when I come off in rehearsal and they sound a mess. And then I be wanting to say, who y'all sound terrible? And then he'll tell me, Pastor, can you get out of our rehearsal, please? Because this has nothing to do with you at the moment. Well, well there, <laughs> there are two things that happen. First of all, I'm hindering his development of a worship team. Okay? So I'm out of place. Now, I don't have, that does not diminish my authority of who I am. Some of this is power kicks. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody talking to me. Yeah. Well, talking right I hired him to do a job. Yeah. Talking right. I have to trust what I brought in. Mm -hmm. So I, instead of me, if I, if I feel some type of way, I just don't go. I stay in my place and I'll catch it on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And in staff meeting on Monday, if they were still terrible, mm -hmm. I'd say, Brother Colton, praise team didn't do it. I don't know what was going on with y'all. It wasn't working. It wasn't happening. So we need to figure that out. What's, what's our solution to this problem? And he says to me, whatever he's going to say, and we, we get on the same page. Okay, let's make that work. Let's make that happen. Because it's important that we don't... Uh, if I'm micromanaging his assignment, then why I need it? Mm -hmm. I should have just did the job. Hello, somebody. If I'm going to micromanage, then I need to do the rehearsal myself. Okay? If I'm going to micromanage, then I need to be over it myself. If I'm going to come in and say, y'all should sing it like this, y'all should go up here, or that ain't how it go, or I don't really, I'm not really into that, then I need to tell him, you be in the choir, I'm just going to. I'm going to do the music, okay? Because what I'm doing is putting a wedge. Not only am I putting a wedge between us, but I'm almost I'm also diminishing his authority with his group. Amen, Pastor. Blake. Thank y'all. I'm also because watch this. If Monterey, if you checking Monterey in front of Lee. Did I say the first one? Right? But you had it right. Okay. If I'm if I'm if I'm discussing with Monterey in front of the team, what I feel, the team now is listening and saying, "Oh, okay." So if they feel some kind of way, then you're going to be their go-to guy. Yes. Well, I really don't. Well, I think we was doing good, and and Monterey was just kind of tripping. He doing that thing you dealt with him on the first time. Yeah. 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 Once that is established. Monterey is no longer effective. He's only effective if you like it. Absolutely. We all on the same page? You had your hand up. Hey, sir. Yeah. 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 fix this part, but it's not for me to fix because he's, you know, the MD. So you just help me out. Yeah. I mean, our bishop, if you've never oh been in a <laughs> I always talk about when we did our regional conference in Bessemer. And after Operation Touch, they was having rehearsal. Jesus. Bishop Winans and I, he said, let's stop by the rehearsal. I was like, let's don't stop by the rehearsal. Jesus. And he sat down, and I started hearing, well, he ain't playing that right. They ain't singing that right. And for the record, Why that? For was, the record, I was the keyboard player for that. He, 
He got up in the middle of the rehearsal and went up there and took the rehearsal. <laughs> now, he the bishop. I got it. But we had to put out a lot of fires. A lot of people was offended. They didn't want to sing because he was delivered. Hey, y'all come sing up here. Y'all go in the back. Y'all don't need a mic. Y'all go in the back because y'all don't even know how to sing this part. Y'all like, and we was like, yeah, that's the great Marvin L. Winers. <laughs> so in order to not have those issues, we keep him out of the rehearsal because he's not over the choir. So instead of saying we have a rehearsal, let's swing by there. No, let's go and get you to the room because you got to preach tonight. Let's go eat. Let's make things better. Now, perfecting, I don't know if he still is. I don't know if he gave it over to David Buford totally. But he is, well, I know for a fact, he's over the praise and worship. He is. He is the praise and worship leader. At one point, he was over the whole music department. Yep. Now, that's a difference. If the pastor is over the music department and he is the leader, then everything is subject to him. Got it? That ain't my job. I don't want to go to rehearsal on Tuesday. I just started the choir, Pastor Blank, so I'm over the choir. Mm -hmm. And they keep me... Pastor, come teach the choir. Mm -hmm. And then rehearse praise teams after that. You dismiss <laughs> when the choir mm -hmm. is over. And when the choir, I rehearse 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. When I'm done, I got to walk on out the door. I normally go home because I'm that, that's going to help us all. I'll stay in my office because I understand there's an assignment. How would you feel? If the worship leader came and said, now, you hoop, when you got to the hooping piece, <laughs> yeah, Doc, uh, you go from here, then you go from there, and it's terrible, you're going to feel some kind of way because you're the pastor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we got to make sure. But there has to be relationships. So let's, let's deal with the relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you three, if I can chunk it down, three C's that make... Three C's that make this dynamic between worship leader and pastor. And, and first of all, just to set even, even more, lay some more concrete on the foundation of why that's so important is the, the foundation of our faith is built on what we hear, right? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? And so the two biggest components in service that we hear is the singing, the music, and the preaching. And the two most disconnected parts of, serve, of, 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 of relationship dynamic, especially in African American church, is between the worship leader and the pastor. That when the, when the worship team is up singing, the pastor's down in his office doing his thing, and it's like these two separate entities within the Then When it's time for the pastor to be up preaching, the worship team and all the band and all the musicians, they out eating donuts and having coffee and taking a break, and then we all come back and be back in the middle of altar worship and then expect God to meet us in the middle of all of that when it, we both been disconnected. And so the root or the foundation of why our dynamic is so important is because our faith is built on what we hear. Like faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So our faith is built on what we hear. So three, three C's that make this dynamic work. I'm gonna give you all the three C's and then let's just dialogue about it. Communication, candor, honesty, and consistency. All right, communication, Candor and consistency. Say that one more time. Communication. Communication. Candor. Candor and, consistency. and consistency. So let's dive in and talk about our communication. Okay. Now, Pastor said we talk um, almost almost every day. 
We talk almost every day, and if we don't talk, if we don't talk every day, we at least communicate every day through text, through email, mainly through text. We communicate every single day. I'll tell you. Yeah. Can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Did you get into this? Yeah. Now, are you the minister of music? Are you the? Are you over everything worship? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're that guy that operates directly under him. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. 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 So I'll say. Communication, okay? We talk, we text every single day. Here is why that is important, and here is why my role, worship leader, my role in helping to oversee the music department, why it's important to hear from him, because my first responsibility before I release a sound in the house, I have to know what the sound is that needs to be released in the house, right? I cannot come up, and here's why communication is so important, I can't come up and wanna sing every praise just because it's the hottest song out, and that's what I wanna sing right now, and that's not what God is saying. God is not speaking to me about what he wants to happen. He's speaking to the man of God that he said in the house. So if our roles and what, what the congregation is hearing is going to align, I have a responsibility to communicate and say, hey, what is God saying? Yes, sir. What is, whether that's through a series, whether that is through a, there's sometimes, there's sometimes where he says, mm -mm, I don't want to do a series. God is saying, let's speak right here. There are times those of us who plan music or those of us who oversee people who plan, mu plan music, there are times where I will have a set list plan because we have communicated. And here's why it's so important to talk every single day. There are times where we will talk on a, a Monday Come on, sir. and we're, we're getting ready to go in and talk about um, strength. So I've planned Israel hold my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is. And William Murphy, um, you are my strength, strength like no other. And there are times where I will communicate and we will talk on Friday evening. And you say, you know, the Lord is saying we need to talk about growing faith. I'm going to move my strength lesson to next week. My responsibility now is how is what I, the sound that is being released for me, how can, I, how can that change now to match what it is that God has sent? So we can make sure that we are aligned. And the only way I know that is through communication. Yes, sir. The only way I know that is through us talking or texting or communicating and you develop whatever communication works best for your dynamic and your um, relationship. Yeah. So, I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. So when do you normally have rehearsals? Tuesdays. Okay. Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Okay, so Friday. Uh-huh. So now you already have rehearsals? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Friday, uh -huh. Pastor Cole, Pastor Cole, Pastor Cole, say, hey, you know, I want to change it to this. How do you communicate to your praise team mm -hmm. or choir? I'm not sure which one you're over. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you communicate with them, get them together, mm -hmm. so that you all can now rehearse this new music? Mm -hmm. And then how do you deal with the, uh, mm -hmm. like I can't mm -hmm. come this week because we already have rehearsal. How do, how do you do that? I will say typically to meet in the middle. Now, it doesn't happen often where we have to switch. To meet in the middle, what I would typically do is if, if I can keep most of the set as possible and maybe just change the last song right before he's about to get up and preach, that's typically how I'll meet in the middle of that. Okay, so we were planning to talk, sing about strength at first, and then pastor singing about, uh, wants to preach about faith. Okay, to meet in the middle of knowing and understanding that you got a team of musicians, you got a team of who, and, and, and just, to be, just to be candid, you have a team of musicians who if I sent out the music Friday evening, now they may complain, but they're skilled and professional enough, they're able to pick it up and go. For my situation, you have a team of singers that if I sent out the music on Friday, we, we'd be a sunken ship on Sunday expecting the singers to know and have that music down and learn and, <laughs> and, learn, and learn for what it is that we need to do. So two, two things. One, I will try to 
Um, I would try to get by by seeing how much of the previous set I could still hold on to and make work and how I can make that pivot right before because the way our service is set up is worship leads right into sets him up leads right into him preaching so how I can make sure whatever that last song is change that to lead right up into where it needs to go secondly when it comes time to the reality of the skill of the team or the preparation of the team um, I will I will I know and how it works for me is I'll just carry the bulk of the load of that yeah. so for instance if if we're wanting to sing a song that is heavy parts heavy and we're having a switch and we just found out on Saturday two things I'll do okay one thing is I will give a heads up to the one or two people that I know can go ahead and go and I will just have a conversation with them without the team I'll call and I'll say uh, lady Douglas hey tomorrow Listen, Soprano, I need you to listen to this song. I need you to just come in, just come in, know it. I'm not even talking to the team, okay? I will, and here's something Pastor taught me as well. A lot of times when there are changes, I don't tell the team, the singers, until Sunday morning. I don't even give them the opportunity to think about, to know, oh my gosh, are we going to learn? I'm going to call you, I'm going to call you, because I know that for the most part, Y'all can be solid and y'all can y'all can get it. And then when we get there on Sunday morning as the worship leader, I take the load of doing the verse or I'll sing the chorus or I'll simplify it to unison and say, hey, I'm going to teach the whole congregation a song. And so I'll simplify it as much as or water it down as much as I can on the back end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There has to be that first piece you say communication. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are days. <laughs> Did I come? I call on Saturday. Because Saturday night is when we really talk. She's going to call and say, All right, Doc, how we looking tomorrow? He's going to say, Good Reverend, how we looking tomorrow? I'm going to say, Well, uh, I was going to say this, but this is where the Lord gave me, and I got to shift. Because we know our team, he's going to say, So what do you have in mind? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if That's there's good. songs on That's the song good. list, he gonna say, "Well, I can get these songs." Uh -huh. Now, if it's not, then we're at this piece right here. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show up. They start run through at nine. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show up at nine forty-five for my part, and I'm gonna go over what I wanna open up with. Sometime we cheat. We gonna get Lady Blair to come. Mm -hmm. It never works. For us, no, it does not. It, it never works, <laughs> never, because she gonna say, "I'm not doing that," <laughs> and you know, then it's just to put on the spot in the middle of church, you know, because then I'm gonna say, "I'm gonna do it," uh -huh. and then I I'll, I'll start it, and then be like, "Lady Blair, come on," and then she's mad, but it's okay, yeah. you know, because we gonna go on anyway. So you you go through those moments, or like he says, "Are we condensed the song?" Don't give me the whole song. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you do a verse and Brittany do a verse, or give me them three singers, make sure they're in the mic's main. Uh -huh. But this has to be developed on that Sunday morning. That's why it's called worship development. We know if the praise team, they got to do them two songs, okay, go on, get strength out the way. Yep. Let's get that out the way, y'all. Yep. Go on, do those two songs. Uh -huh. But when I come up to preach, we got to deal with faith. Uh -huh. So I'm going to come up with this faith song. And we're going to start it, whether it's I Have the Faith by Vanessa Bell, mm -hmm. I'm going to start it and call Lady Blair, and we done. Or Mar uh, Bishop Winans, you are so faithful that, you know, whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. And we might say the front part is too wordy. Let's just go to the course, and you do the front part yeah. as a lead. You work it out and develop it. Then everybody's anxiety is not high on Sunday. We yeah. just saying yeah. we're gonna go through this and we're gonna be good. You just gotta make sure the band know where you're going. Yes. And if the band is skillful, yeah. then you can do what you want to do. You know, we come off, I don't want off in there mm -hmm. one Sunday. I come in there on Sunday morning and be like, I need y'all to learn this song right quick. Just can you get this ending part for me? And they be like, Yeah. They don't be wanting to, but they be like, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I be like, don't mess up neither. <laughs>
So, so communication that, that, is key. That, that communication piece. The second one, and I will say, for me, and and you've taught me this as well, so I, I know I can say for you, I would say the second C is the most important with our dynamic, and that's candor. Mm -hmm. um, that's honesty. That is putting it all out on the table. Um, transparency um, and being able to really like have those courageous conversations have those honest conversations because progress does not happen without honesty like as long as I look in the mirror and say well I'm not that big I don't need to you know oh well maybe I just need to lose five pounds like okay well then I can have a little cheeseburger here because really I'm not like as long as I'm not honest about where I am and where I need to be, pro real progress can't happen. And so this candor piece, um, I will tell you one of the things about Pastor Blair and our candor um, is Pastor Blair is, um, he, he's tactful, but his honesty is very direct. Um, it, is, it is tactful, but direct. My honesty, which the whole team laughs at, uh, our whole staff laughs at, is um, it is very, it is tactful. Um, it can be, it can be indirect, um, but it is also very, you will leave wondering sometimes like, okay, so did I sing a bad note or did I not sing a bad note? You know, and, and that, is, that, is, that is something that, you know, we meet in the middle on, but I'm just saying in our dynamic, here's what that looks like in terms of when it comes to planning service, when it comes to planning worship. Um, those Monday conversations, our day is Monday. And those Monday conversations are crucial to the growth of uh, and development of church. On Sundays, one of the things that I respect and appreciate about Pastor Blair and what makes my, when it comes to candor and what makes my role easy is that on Sunday mornings, we both know our main goal and objective is to help usher the people to Jesus. So our opinions on his opinions on music and how we sound and if it was if it sucked and all of that stuff. Sunday, right before we about to get ready to go into service, is not the time to have that candid conversation about that. You know, I know even as a worship leader, as when I'm talking to the team and we in sound check and they just suck during sound check and I want to really fuss and go in like I would on a Tuesday night, Sunday morning is not the time for me to fuss and go in and have that candor. Like there has to be candor with wisdom, right? There has to be truth compared uh, with grace when it comes to Sunday morning. Now, Monday, Monday morning, that is the time where we have to. And here is here is where here's why the relationship is so important. Because the only way candor works is you have to know each other to, and yeah. know the hearts of each other. There you go. Like we have to build a and I say relationship. I mean, like, that's why it's important to just every now and again. Hey, let's go to lunch. Yeah. Hey, let's 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 go. Let's go uh, downtown real quick and just drive around because we have to we have built a relationship that now the foundation is there for us to be honest without saying okay, are you trying to, is that an attack towards me and, or, or being defensive? And I will say, before I go back to candor, I will say that in those moments, here's why communication is number one, then candor. In those moments where candor does become offensive, that's where communication is important. That's why we have an opening to say, he'll say, now hold on, Colton, are you, are you trying to come for me? Like, I, I feel some type of way about that. Or I'll say, now, Pastor, Okay, that kind of that kind of that kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. Shot shoot, we are, yeah, yeah, we always shooting shots. But it is the candidacy of being able to say, "Here's what our Mondays look like." Okay, just to make it practical, our Mondays look like we have a whole team staff meeting with the whole team. Every ministry leader who is uh, a part of the worship experience is on that call on Mondays, and we go through each area: media, audio, visual. Uh, sound, audio, um, and then music. And we're going down the list, not only just hearing from pastor, we're dialoguing with each other, what went well, what was tricky, and what will we do differently for the next Sunday. Then we hear from Pastor Blair, 
Well, here are my notes. Boom, 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 boom. Mainly after that meeting, always after that meeting, Pastor Blair and I will stay on the call and he'll say, hey, here is what I liked and didn't like about the worship experience. Here is what I liked and didn't like about the music experience. And he is talking to me as the music director and I go filter that out. And here's, here's why, here's why another, another reason this, this relationship is so important. Because the pastor, pastor needs to be able to say what he's feeling without the filter and then I'm able to go take it back to the band, back to the singers, back to everybody with the filter to be able to help us get to where we need to go. But that candor piece, can you talk just a little bit about what that looks like with us? One scripture that I use on our people, the scripture says, know them that labor amongst you. When you know each other, mm -hmm. then nothing's personal. Nothing's, uh, nothing's offensive. Amen. Um, you can be honest and transparent. When we get on the call, he made me sound like, I really felt like I, I'm a nice person listening to you on the call. But it gets serious because yes. again, I don't know how to beat around the bush mm -hmm. to say, oh, that was just terrible. Mm -hmm. And I asked questions. If we if we on the media, I was like, what y'all was looking at? What? You all, what was y'all doing? Y'all all, it's a seven second rule. Why was you there 20, 20 seconds? Yep. We should have been off that. We didn't want to look at the ladies' wig falling off. That ain't what we, we ain't here to show that. You know, we here to show, if you saw something, we got this word, pay attention to everything that's in the shot. Mm -hmm. Don't just everything. go. Because you see Pastor Blanks and you want him like you didn't see that brown thing or the dreams. You have to pay attention to what's in the shot. Now, I ask questions. Now, what happened? Mm -hmm. and then when they got to tell me what happened, then I said, so we're going to fix that. Or if the music or one of the things that we say to each other, because I'm also developing as preaching. I, I want to be time conscious of people's time. I'm on a different story. I believe you can have church at a decent time. Shout, prophesy, pray, and enjoy church. I think some stuff we just drag out for no reason. That's just me. Amen. Okay? We just won't be in church three hours, yes. and then we mad because folk don't want to come to church. Amen. Okay? We living in a different day. So I be like, hey, I enjoyed the exhortation, mm -hmm. but let's, it ain't got to be... Mm -hmm. Two hours of exhortation. Mm -hmm. Let's bring that down. Let's get to get to where you're going yeah. so we can get there. Yeah. Or was that important enough? If do we gotta have five songs? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So we don't ask those questions. That's that's our conversation. Yeah. We sung too many songs Sunday. Yeah. And I'm the first guilty because I got up wanting to do a concert. My job is to is to bring the word, but I felt like I wanted to sing all these. No, okay, well then we need to know because once you go past that mark, you can't go to sending people to hell because yeah. they leaving at one and they've been there at 1030. Yeah. Or if it's your team, they've been there for us. Our team start at 730. Mm -hmm. Team got to get there at 730. So from 730 to 2 o'clock, hey, that's, we gotta, and we learned that in virtual because we would have all these numbers in virtual and be there too long, people get off, yeah, we gone. And we used to say, hey, the numbers fall. Yeah. So you gotta learn, create your stuff and put it in the time frame where we can enjoy it. But if we can't say that in yeah. our candor moments yeah. without it being offensive, you know, <laughs> they told me one Sunday, cause I'd be like, okay, so give me some preaching notes. One thing, my two, is Lady Blair and Coulter. Pastor, you too long, you don't have notes. Mm -hmm. And then I had to think about it. I am, because at that moment, I'm going off what I done read. I got a whole study going on in my head, and instead of me writing it down and condensing that, I done just went to flying off. I got a whole study that I'm going to drop off. So I done went from preaching 45 minutes to an hour and 15 because I got study in my system. Mm 
when I need to filter through that. Okay, the whole back history of it didn't need to be told. <laughs> okay, the whole this, so filter it down. That's what notes for. Notes the, is just there for you to have it so you can say, let me stay on my target or where I want to go. Okay, but when we don't want to hear that, that's not a shot. That's just a, hey, we're trying to make sure. Again, we got to keep our virtual, yeah. but we also got to develop our worship to where we're being effective. Yeah. Effective. People gonna come to church tonight. You know why? Go use out by nine. Yeah. Guess what they gonna say? They ain't gonna be there all night. How many times you don't want to say, there's a preacher that come to Fort Worth. I ain't gonna call no name. He comes to Fort Worth. And when he comes, I go to church at 1030. And I'm still in church two hours. Mm -hmm. Am I? Mm -hmm. I do Bible study, talk to the people at the church, hang around at the church, move furniture. And then go hear him preach, and I'm still there two hours. And I look at all them people who've been there all that time, and when I'm coming, people be leaving, I be like, is church over? They be like, mm-mm, he just said point one. I'm like, yeah, I thought so, I'm good. Hey, we gotta be time, cut, but that's in our candor moments to yeah. share that. There are times when the Holy Ghost gonna keep you there a minute. You yeah. gonna, we got those moments. Yeah. But here's what we do. We ain't gonna hold our virtual audience that long. Cause we know if you went from 100 down to 20. Get off of there. Get off there. <laughs> Cause next week they ain't coming back. Okay? They want the same experience. That's gonna help them get to church. One lady saw us going in and we got off yep. the line. She got in her car and yep. drove to church. Yep. She said, y'all got off the line. I had to come to church. I said, yeah, but we still in here. We, yeah. we going in. She got off and came to church. So you got to be mindful in your development. The candor is important. So we got five minutes. Yeah, on the yeah. Last and the last is consistency. Just with the communication and consistency is just what ties all of this into a bow. That the communication and the candor and the open dialogue and the checking in week to week, day to day. We check in quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily. That's how our, that's how our check-ins look. We have a check-in where we're talking about what's happening with the worship experience this quarter. Then we have what's happened with, happening with the worship experience at the top of the month this month or at the end of the previous month this coming month. What's happening with the worship experience this week and then from day to day, what are the little small nuggets or little small pivots or changes that we need to implement before we get to the next Sunday. The consistency is just making sure that whatever systems, whatever protocols are in place with the communication, with the candor, with whatever the dynamic of the relationship is that that remains consistent that that remains consistent that I have to be consistent about and we are often when we notice we know when it's not consistent because when we turn on that stream or when we go back and look at service we can say we didn't talk this week you didn't uh, you didn't call me today I, what, what you mean go look at the stream or we didn't, or not even at the stream, sometimes we will be in service and see the fruit or lack thereof of not being consistent in our systems, in our operations, in our communication and candor with each other uh, throughout the week. Consistency develops your worship. Mm. We have to teach our, and I'm gonna say this, and I want you to get it. We have to teach our people our worship. Now, what are you saying? They know at Newbury, by 11.15 to 11.30, I'm up, mm -hmm. okay? They know praise and worship is gonna go because we're intentional. Please mm -hmm. get that. You have to be intentional if you're gonna be consistent. Mm -hmm. So we're intentional. Our song, we bumped our song up to three songs and I had to go back and tell Coach, mm-mm, because -mm. mm -hmm. we sing too long. We better stay at one and a half. Uh -huh. Okay, and then musicians, if we know we want to shout and dance, y'all control that. Yeah. So we ain't got to act like we don't know, hey, we, we at that moment, let's get at it, baby. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's go, let's move, because here's what happens. People, people move off what you present. Yeah. Okay, 
Pay attention to Bishop when we're in convocation. We can be bumping, but when Bishop say, mm -hmm. that band gonna say, bam! And if you didn't get that shout in at that moment, you better hope we get back there after that sermon. Because what Bishop is saying, and, and when he comes in, if you've yeah. ever conducted a service at convocation, blanks know this, when Bishop come in and he feel like it's going too long, he's going to look at you and say, but we waiting on Go stand up there. And everybody knows when we stand, I don't care, I don't care how, how deep you think you are, you back out. You back out. Because what he understands is the most time we developing on is the word tonight. All this, if they ain't getting it at the moments we there, no, no, you can't create your own moment. I just want to get my own shout in now. No, you got to go when all of us was moving. You got to move when the water is stirred. Okay? And he is a stickler on that. He'll, he'll say, and if service is dry, he's going to look at you and say, pick this up. <laughs> yeah, he's he going to make it happen. We have to do that even in our moments of our own church. Okay, Colton, it's on you. At 10, 50, at 10 30, one thing that's going to happen in our church, Absolutely. we ain't looking for no audience. Absolutely. We start. Hey, man, y'all know people ain't going to get there until about 11. They're going to miss 30 minutes of worship because yeah. we gone. Yeah. We gone. Uh, we need to change our time to 11. Mm -hmm. Let's take a pick. But we can't say we started at one time and we're going to wait on people. Yeah, that's right. No, let's take off. Okay, let's, let's, let's go. And when they get in, we want them to come in, get into the worship. Get involved. They're going to already know. Hey, we might not get another dance after this, so everybody's going to go to dancing. Bring them in. Bring, bring them in. Bring them in. When we get all that, then we're effective and consistent with our time. Roughly, we get out of church, we probably push it about 1230, 1245. We done, we done group. Okay. It was 12. It was 12. It was 12. Oh I'm going to blame it on Colton. <laughs> He's going to blame it on me. Okay. And then every staff meeting, I'm saying, I know y'all, I'm going to, I know. I tried to get the whole series in one Sunday. I sh it's a series. That's the purpose of a series. Break that up and pick up where you left off. Extend the series. Yeah. Okay, y'all missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Extend the series. Yeah. You ain't got to give it all in one day. Because when you do study, people's attention span. And here's what I did in our church, and I'm done. We can go home. What I did with my church, Eris, was so I did two things that was important. Number one, I did a, uh, a what you call it, a questionnaire. What you like about service? What you don't like about service? The most offended part on the service was they said, when you go to hooping, we tuned out. Yep. We're not into the hooping piece. The teaching is phenomenal. But the hooping, we kind of out. I didn't take that personal. I just shortened it up because they ain't listening. I like the hoop. So that's what I like. So I ain't got to do it 20 minutes. I get my little clone and I'm saying, I'm out of there. Because I done done my work in the teaching. So what that mean? Put your meat in the teaching. My God. The Baptist church said, make the hoop, the gravy. Just bring us up. You ain't got to have all the gravy. The gravy. Put a little on it and get out of there. And then pick back up on next Sunday where you left off. Last Sunday we dealt with this. We talked about this. I'm not an evangelist on Sunday morning. I'm a pastor. Yeah, yeah. We talked about this. Let's pick this back up. And then here's, what, here's, another, here's how you know whether you're effective or not. Go in on Wednesday and say, now what did we talk about on Sunday morning? Because I want to deal with some stuff with that. And if your church looking at you like, so then I have to ask you, did y'all hear me preach on Sunday? Yeah. I said, where did I lose y'all? It was kind of long. I just forgot. I mean, I was writing some notes. And you pay attention to their notes. If they only got the first 20 minutes of it, and I'm trying to help us. If they only got the first 20 minutes of it, then your job is not that effective. Because you got to learn. Okay, my church can handle 20 minutes. They can handle 20 minutes. So I need to be killing it in 20 minutes. Okay, the next 10 I'm going to celebrate. And then I'm going to get them out of here. If they can handle 30 minutes, go. 
Pay attention. Hey, what did y'all get? Talk to them. They're going to say, oh, we got this. And you're going to say, well, that's the first. Oh, that was the first part. Y'all yeah. didn't get nothing about this at the end. Oh, did you say that? Because their attention span yeah. is gone. And, we, and in the African-American church, this is why we don't grow as much, because we don't pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Your Caucasian sisters and brothers, no offense, my brother, you, you with us now. The, but they pay attention to, I can't preach that long. Yeah. Jake's is a stick long. Mm -hmm. Jake be like, no, nah, I'm going to hit it right here, and I'm going to get my main nuggets. Then I'm going to back out, and then next Sunday I'm going to come back and say, so let's pick up what we left off last Sunday. Yeah. He's going to bring it to the end, and then he's going to take you to where he wants to go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're getting it. But what people are saying, who I love my church. Now, well, they can go stay at the movies three hours. Yeah. They can go stay at the ball game three hours. Yeah. But the devil ain't bothering them at that stuff. Come yeah. on here. Yeah, come on. That's the difference. Yeah. Just talk, man. Okay, I know. He ain't, bother, he ain't bothering them at the football game. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He ain't bothering them at the movies. Yeah. Wow. But at that church, if it look like they getting empowered, he's kicking in the back door. Yeah. Your stomach growl. The baby next to you. Ah, everything is happening and you're getting distracted. Yes, sir. My church said, you make us talk to our neighbors all the time. You know what I told them? Yeah, because y'all want y'all talking in church. So if y'all want to talk in church, I'm going to let y'all talk. Tell your neighbor. Mm. Two things the reason why I say tell your neighbor. Number one, because they ain't going to let you sleep. Mm -hmm. Touch your neighbor and say Okay, you got to talk to them. But here's the other thing. If I'm driving a point I want you to get, touch your neighbor and tell them. Okay? If I was you, I would write that down. That's what I say. And you work what you have to work. Any questions, we good. Let's give it up, Brother Colton. Any questions? In the virtual world, is hey, if you online, type it in the chat. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Engage in worship. Yeah. People. People. If you ever see me, if you ever watch my live, I go to the pulpit with my phone. And here's what I've learned with people, because this kids it every time. I get names. Y'all didn't hear me last night when I was saying, Sister Elder Lewis, I'm waiting on you to give. Sister such, 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 I'm waiting on you to give. And then they start saying, I'm sewing. I'm sewing. Because I include what's on here. You call people by name, guess what they're saying? Oh, yeah, we, we feel like we involved. When you, when you act like you don't know they're on there, then, hey, you're you going to lose them. Get on there and call some people by name. God bless you, such and such and such. I got to see such and such in here. I see such and such in here. And when Tam and David come in, I use that to my benefit. I got the mans in the church. God bless y'all. Now, guess what's going to happen? Everybody going to like and share and say, they in the room. You got to be in When Bishop was coming in the room, I used to reckon that. We do it in COVID. Bishop is in the room. Let's reckon. Because I knew what name he would come up under. I said, Bishop Wine is in the room. And we used to do this thing called intentional praise mm -hmm. during uh, COVID. What that mean was, we didn't have nobody but them purple chairs. Mm -hmm. But we would intentionally get a dance in. Y'all, I got a reason to praise God. It's intentional for me tonight. Mm -hmm. I do it in common case. It's intentional. You know, I just had a flashback. What the Lord has done, I'm going to take me 15 seconds right here to break out. Yeah. And then everybody start putting them little dance emojis in there. Okay? You engage your people. We need an intentional praise tonight. But yeah. We're going to have it. Before we go on the road, we need more on the road. We need more on the road. Gotcha. <laughs> we get two in here for tonight as well. Okay. But, but, it, but we got to consider one of the things that I was glad about service last night, and we could have got a dance in last night and still got out at night. Mm -hmm. One of the things I appreciated that Pastor Fred, the people had, they were driving home. And I said to one brother, look, you driving home at 930. By 11, you'll be in your bed. Mm -hmm. Pastor Blanks drove home. Hey, you ain't driving at 1 o'clock in the morning trying to go home. Yeah. Yeah. You should be at home. Yeah. I got people driving six hours here tonight doing a turnaround. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to be at church till 10 o'clock with y'all. Mm -hmm. 
Because I would say in the middle of church, y'all can be dismissed. Yeah. And them jokers will get up and leave. We're going to finish shouting and dancing. Okay? Because as a pastor, if I want them to travel, I got to be concerned that I'm concerned about their time. Yeah. I got 30 people coming. You know why? Because I told them, I'll make sure y'all get back in time. Because mm-hmm. I have to understand, Pastor Dick, that while they driving, at some point I'm going to be in the bed mm-hmm. watching TV or TV watching me. So I got to respect what they're doing, but they know when y'all come to church, don't come here trying to act like y'all all that. Y'all come here like y'all want to have some church. When we go to bumping, y'all better get with it. Y'all got, you always have a reason to praise. Yes. Always. I don't understand why nobody have to pump you to praise. Yes. You always have a reason to praise. Yes. If you made it to church, you have a reason. Oh. Y'all, y'all on my page now? I love y'all. Let's give it up for Lady Douglas again, Brother Colton, Deacon Lee. Uh, can I drop something real quick? Yes, you can. Um, when we started, I've always been connected. It's always been music. It's always been music. And the, the tech aspect of it was a sidebar for me. I got into it because I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. But um, when COVID hit, I was thrown in the deep end of the pool and had to learn how to swim. And so a lot of the stuff I picked up over the course of the last two, three years, the thing that the Lord challenged me with, and he took me to the hymn, our old Baptist hymn. And as you're developing your media teams, keep this in your mind. The old hymn, a charge to keep I have. A God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, and fit it for the sky. It's the second verse. To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. May it all my power engage to do my master's will. Take that into 2022 and 2023 and recognize that we're serving this present age. If you still using cassette tapes, you're not in this present age. You're not in this present age. If you're not doing things digitally, you're not in this present age. If you're not paying attention to everything that's been said in here and anybody that's going to watch this and all this stuff that we're passing along, you got to be engaged in this present age. My grandson and my granddaughter, they're 10 and 12 years old. They spend 60 to 70 percent of their day right here on these devices doing everything. The lights, the videos, TikTok, all of that kind of stuff. And that is this present age. And if you're not engaged, then you're going to be left behind. Uh, One last nugget I'll leave with you. Never do nothing longer than your leader. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's yes, good. sir. I got to say out on that. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm not going to preach as long as Bishop Wine is in perfecting fellowship because I understand they come to hear him. I'm the added, I'm the added tool to make happen what we need to make happen for the ministry. I can't say, well, he preached an hour, I'm going to preach now. Mm-hmm. No. I got to always leave it set up to where they're going to come back to hear the leader more than they hear anything. That's right. Amen. I tell my leaders at that church, if I do 45, you better have a good 30. Absolutely. Be effective in that. Because it only takes a few minutes for people to get discouraged. And people, when we, we talk about respect to people, when we have people to come up and I say, I'm leaving, then my people go to church because they know oh, Colton ain't going to be long today. We ain't going to be there long. But if I leave and your people say, I ain't going to church, pastor ain't there. You might want to check leadership. Wow. Make sure they're not doing something extra. They can't go beyond what you do. Yeah. Or they won't be there. I'm just saying for us now. Yeah. All right, we good? We're all standing. Pastor Dad, you come on. You don't put it on me all this time. You gonna come on close us out today. You've been hiding behind the scenes. Can we give it up for this great man right here, y'all?
Somebody shout amen. Amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. One more time. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I have enjoyed. Glory to God. I have yeah. enjoyed. Did you get anything out of this today? Yes, sir. Glory to God. We thank God for it. We look forward to seeing you tonight. Uh, for those who you want to, we're going to go over to House of Peace so you can take a look at what's going on there and get ready to set out all that up for tonight. Uh, this has really blessed me. At this point, we don't have a musician here, but hopefully Wednesday night we'll start having one coming in on Wednesday night because we want to build a relationship. That was one of the key things, and when I start saying that, that's okay. As we get this relationship together, then we know that the rest of them are coming. Somebody shout amen. amen. We thank God for it. Uh, Deacon Coleman over there, uh, I love how we were talking about candor. Uh, he's a retired military man, so you know he, and I, and I used to be the police. So we bump heads every now and then, but, but I can count on him. Amen. If I can't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. So, glory to God. We look forward to seeing y'all tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for what you've done in this house this morning. We thank you, oh God, for the facilitators of this program. Father, we thank you, oh God, that this, this information that we've gained today, oh God, we will continue to use it so that the kingdom will benefit from the things that we've learned here today. Help us, oh God, to continue to keep our eyes focused on you, for we are kingdom-minded. We give you the glory now, God, with honor and the praise. It is in your darling son, Jesus' name, that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.